So we went through some technical details on how to calculate wall pressure and to take those pressures and turn them into forces. But we need to do some examples because there's some more intricacies. For example, if there's a water table where you've got to break these forces into different subparts to be able to do the calculations. Let me show you what I mean. So on the example that we're going to do, we've got a wall and right now it's just represented by a big block and there's an angle and that's 10 degrees and first thing well okay so there's a, there's a, an embedment and that happens to be the location of the water table also and, and we would need to assume that the water table is going to be the same on both sides And, and so then we need to calculate the pressure on the wall. So we need to remember that um, the first thing that we need to do is calculate the vertical effective stress. And then we'll turn that into a horizontal or an active uh, effective stress. And that if there's an inclined backfill, that that active stress would also be inclined by the same amount. So let me draw you what this would look like. So if we look at this back face, remember this is our wall, it's just a big immovable mass and we're going to talk about how to do the factor safety design next. But for now we need to find out what those forces are on the wall to figure out if it's going to slide or rotate. And so on this um, back face there's a, a pressure distribution and uh, the, the pressure distribution is going to have a change in slope in it at the location of the water table. And it's also inclined by 10 degrees. So we've got a pressure distribution that's triangular that's inclined 10 degrees for everything above, let's call this location B and then we'll call this location T. And so that kind of represents uh, one easily calculated um, resultant that we could turn a triangle into a resultant. But there's also the resultant from things below the water table And that's also going to be inclined at 10 degrees. And there's going to be two components that exist right here. So we'll have a resultant that corresponds with just this triangle. And then we'll have a resultant that corresponds with this rectangle. And then we'll also have a resultant that corresponds with this triangle right here. So it starts to get pretty tricky and so um, if you're not totally into that let me just break this out for just a second. If we just look at this face again right here this purple face and and we instead of looking at horizontal pressure let's just look at the vertical pressure. Here's our water table. We know that that is going to have a change in slope in it at the location of the water table. And the way that we do our calculations, we need to take the vertical stress and then calculate Ka from that. So what that means is that at each of these locations B and T, we're going to calculate the vertical stress. And if we plotted that, this would be location B be location T. Um, and if we wanted to calculate just those resultants, there would also be a need to break this into um, three distinct to try and three distinct distinct shapes rather than one big uh, triangle. So we need to get Ka. And the equation for Ka 
is cosine of beta. Beta is the inclination of the uh, backfill minus the square root of the cosine squared of the backfill angle minus the cosine squared of the friction angle. And then that gets divided by the same thing with the inversion in the sine. So if we put our numbers into this, and if you remember that cosine squared is just the cosine of something times the cosine of something. So let's go ahead and work this problem out. So we'll start over again. We've got a big mass that's going to act as our retaining wall. We don't need all these dimensions because we're not going to calculate the factor of safety. But it's probably good to get a feel for it. Uh, this is backfill soil. We're not going to do the calculations on that, but uh, the water table is also at the backfill. And that dimension is 5 feet. The backfill is inclined. It's a little bit exaggerated here. 10 degrees. And the soil has a unit weight of 110 pounds per foot cubed. And it's got an effective friction angle of 40 degrees. So, um, Ka, the active um, horizontal ratio, is a function of the soil. So we need to go ahead and calculate that. Um, Ka is the cosine of the backfill angle. We got the cosine squared here of the backfill angle. And then the cosine squared of the friction angle. Oops, I should have written that in as 40. cosine of the backfill angle, now we've got a plus, otherwise the numerator and the denominator are the same. And our answer is 0 0.228. All right. Um, we talked about how the water table is the same on both sides of the wall, last slide. And we talked about identifying this as location B, and this will be location T. So to do the, to calculate the active pressure, we need to first calculate the vertical pressure at those particular points. So we're looking for the vertical stress at B. and the vertical stress at T. So here I'm using the effective unit weight. So 
Um, now we need to talk about the different types of resultants that we're going to calculate. So we're going to um, look at the pressure on the back side of this wall. Now that pressure is going to be inclined at the same angle beta. And there's going to be a change in inclination at the location of the groundwater table. And in order to get the forces in the right location within the vertical dimension, um, we need to break these into s simpler uh, shapes. So we could do some cool integration stuff, but be easier to break these into triangles and rectangles. So that's what we're going to do. So let's call this section one. Let's call this section two. And we'll call this one section three. And we're going to calculate the resultants of each of those sections. And uh, the important thing to recognize is that um, we need to get uh, on the tri on the first triangle, say for example, we need to get this dimension. And that dimension is the vertical stress at B times Ka. So that would be, if this is a triangle, that would be B and then H is going to be 15 feet. So let's let's just look at that calculation. So um, the resultant for section one, the remember the resultant is basically the area of a triangle. Uh, the area of a triangle is one half base times height, and so we've got our one half, and the base is 0 0.228. That's Ka um, times the um, vertical stress at B and then that gets multiplied by the height so this is our active stress and that would sort of be like the base of uh, calculating a triangle we do our calculations and we get 2822 pounds per foot of wall and that would be exerted at the one-third mark so if we look at this dimension um, this would be two-thirds and this would be one-third So there's R1. We need to calculate R2 and R3. So R2 is a square. So the area of a square is just base times height. So the base is going to be um, 0 0.228 times 1650. So there's the base, and then that's multiplied by the height, that's five feet. We get 1881 pounds per linear foot of wall. So if this wall is only one foot long, we would have 1881 pounds. And that's going to be right at the center or halfway between point B and point T. There's our R2. We need to get R3. So one half uh, of the base, in this case, the base is just this dimension right here. 0.228 
So this part is the base. And then the height is only five feet. So I'm gonna get 135 pounds per linear foot of wall. And that one is gonna be exerted at the one third mark. So one third from the bottom of this five feet. So that's gonna be one third of five feet. Now, if we wanted to move a little bit farther through this problem, then we would need to break this into the corresponding horizontal and vertical stresses. Um, we can look at R1 and we can see that if we break this that we will actually see a shear force associated with R1 and then a horizontal force associated with R1 and so we would just need to do, use either cosine or sine and so we'll see that play out when we do the factor of safety calculations for now, I think that this is a pretty good start to trying to calculate what are the forces, pressures, and then leading into what the resultants would be. And then later we would need to take all of these forces. So there's six now that we can see. There's R1, R2, and R3 broken out into the horizontal and the vertical directions. And we would put those into a sum of forces to try and see if our big immovable object would slide and then we would put in a uh, sum of moments about this toe. And so we've got driving forces that, that are these horizontal resultants. And then we've got resisting forces, which is the weight. And so there's moment arms associated with each of those. So we'll do some examples like that next, and we may just take this example and do the factor of safety analysis for it next. But here's an example. This is the Rankine's method. It, the Rankine equation that I use, that's this one. It doesn't take into consideration the possibility of an immovable object with an inclined uh, back, uh, back face of the wall. And it also doesn't take into consideration the frictional component along the back side of this wall. So we could do this exact same problem again with our big immovable mass and use Coulomb instead and we would get an additional stabilizing effect because it will consider the friction at the back of the wall and what happens is the resultant becomes inclined even more. So. Uh, Coulomb is a little bit harder to do the calculations. It's a more involved uh, K calculation. If you were to automate it in a spreadsheet, that becomes trivial. Um, but it tends to give you a little bit more aggressive design possibilities because you'll get that additional vertical stress, which has a stabilizing effect. So the next examples that we'll see will be Coulomb, and we'll start to take these and, and do some factor of safety analysis.